three white guys dragging a black guy to death. Hold your hand up. You wouldn't say it when you did it. Aryan Nation or KKK. Any comment? The 49-year-old victim was an African-American. He's my child, and I know he didn't do any harm to anyone. The victim was a father of three, the youngest just 16. That 16-year-old was Jamie Bird. My dad was forced into a pickup truck by three white supremacists. 22 years later, she remembers that agony. I wanted them drugged behind a pickup truck just like my dad was drugged. She remembers the very day. On June 7, 1998, her father, James Bird, was badly beaten, spray painted, then chained by his ankles to the back of this pickup truck, dragged for three miles. It was here on the old country Huff Creek Road, his body dismembered and dumped in front of a black church. The motive? These men were fueled by racism. Nothing but hate for Bird simply because he was a black man. It was those three white supremacists who um, pretty much planned to lynch an uh, African-American male that night, and my dad just happened to be that person. At 16 years old, Jamie Bird has lived through one of the more painful chapters in Southeast Texas history. Her father, a victim of one of the worst hate crimes of the 20th century. How could Jamie ever rid her heart of the anger she had for these three men? The solution? It came with time, a personal evolution. You like this age group? Her anger morphing. Just keep doing what I told you to do. To purpose, which is why you see Jamie Bird now yeah. with a badge. We have to work harder as black people in general, not just black police officers, um, but just black people in general in teaching our kids uh, the do's and don'ts and the fact that we're not privileged. Nine years on the force with the Houston Police Department and Bird feels she's right where she needs to be really now more than ever. It never came to flourish until George Floyd's death. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Officer Bird now using her position her voice to condemn this. Actions, she says, brought her flashbacks of the hate that killed her own father. I felt their pain, um, still to this day. George Floyd dying under the knee of a Minneapolis police officer. Anger, frustration, disappointment, mostly, because, you know, 2020 and we're still um, reliving this um, type of hatred. In 1998, crowds took to the streets of Jasper, Texas, crying out for justice and an end to racism. Don't shoot. Hands up. And Don't now shoot. in 2020, the same cry, but intensified. In the wake of George Floyd's death, we see calls for police reform front and center and desperate pleas to stop police brutality. It's the fact that that was excessive force and it was wrong. It was pre-murder in daylight where his kids, his five children, will have to see this probably for the rest of their lives. For Bird. I have a, a black son. And she wonders what he may face if he falls victim to being profiled by police. That's very hard and for me to just uh, fathom the thought of what he would encounter. Um, but I would again just talk to him and tell him the spectrum of how the law works. And it's this exact conversation Bird takes to the schools and to the streets. It makes me believe that, you know, there are some good officers out there. I feel like you have to join this department with a heart that you're coming to serve and protect no matter what color the person is. And you're going to do that at the most high that, that you've been sworn in to do. As the saying goes, be the change you wish to see. Officer Bird here is a living testimony. My dad would want me to go out and, and be that change and be that voice and just stand on the right side of the fence. I'm Svania Coley, ABC 13 Eyewitness News.